right now it's time to introduce our next speaker. Uh, he goes by the name of Ron Timihin. Ron's a freelance photographer with a pretty impressive client list and a great Instagram following. He's drawn to creating atmospheric landscapes and cityscapes. So I'm going to welcome Ron and uh, thanks for joining us. So Ron, you've been taking photographs for years and it's fair to say it's working out pretty well for you. So, some people might be surprised to hear that you haven't always been a photographer. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started and a bit about your background. Sure, so um, firstly, Gavin, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, thanks for having me. Sure. Um, so yeah, initially I got into photography through music. Right. Um, so for those that don't know, I was actually a trumpeter from a very young age. Oh, wow. And um, with lots of practice, lots of hours, I began ranking up the grading system. And by the age I was 16, 16 years old, I had achieved my grade eight. And that meant that I was then able to tour with different bands, different right. orchestras. Right. And um, so whilst I was traveling um, to lots of different places in the world, right. um, that's where my eye for photography kind of developed. Wow. Um, I was seeing some amazing sights and I felt I needed to document it. And so wow. that's how it started. Excellent, so you were already seasoned before you got into the creative game, traveling the world like a celebrity. But, <laughs> I don't know. Excellent. So it's fair to say you're a pro at editing your photos in Lightroom, but um, how have you found this challenge to integrate Adobe stock into your images? Obviously being a photographer, it might be a conflict of interest in some people's eyes. So how does that work for you? Yeah, so this was actually a big challenge for me. Um, I think for two reasons. So firstly, as you said, yes, I use Lightroom mainly. Right. And so the entire of my, entirety of my work process was actually done in Photoshop. Right. And although I have some experience with Photoshop, I'm not as seasoned as I am in Lightroom. Right. So that was the first, first thing. Um, I think secondly as well, um, the technique I was using was actually merging two different mediums. Right. So I was merging photography and video files. Right. And so making sure those work together smoothly was also kind of the second challenge for me. Excellent, excellent. Now, as I've already mentioned to Lucy, the event is inspired by Adobe Stock's creative reality visual trend, where we're seeing these fantastical otherworldly images, like a, a day glow version of reality. How are you going to be interpreting this theme today? OK, so initially, the, the first kind of um, things that jumped out to mind, um, so Firstly, with the vivid colors, I'm right. seeing some incredible bold palettes. Um, that was a kind of recurring theme through some of the artwork I saw. Right. Um, secondly, there was a really weird juxtaposition between different realities. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to incorporate that into the technique I'm going to be demonstrating today. Yeah. So taking two normal settings, but right. putting them together to create something new and something special. Right. Um, and again, yes, yeah, so I've, I'm taking a common technique that's used in photography, right. but I'm adding a spin on it, which kind of gives it that futuristic feel. Excellent, excellent. So we're looking forward to seeing what you come up with tonight. Um, uh, let's take it away and see what you come up with. Cool. Um, so the technique I'm actually going to be showing today is called um, a double exposure cinemagraph. Right. And a common theme that people use in photography is double exposures, where you merge two images together to create um, a unique, unique image. However, this time I'm actually going to be using a video file merged with a photo, well, a photo that I took. So oh. this is the finished product, just so everyone can have an idea of what it looks like. Wow. Excellent. That's phenomenal. And so, yeah, we're going to jump into how I, how I came about this. OK, cool. Um, so first things first, I have um, a really simple shot of one of my friends, right. um, Irene. And what we want to do here is we want to isolate our subject. And so to do this, I use the quick selection tool um, if you do want to do it in detail, I would suggest using the pen tool so you can get a lot more that's my tool. accurate yeah, that's pen my tool. tool. Yeah, yeah, all day. Um, but yeah, for today, I'm just going to use the quick selection tool um, just to select my subjects. I'm sure I've seen her on your Instagram. Yes, yeah. I work with her quite, quite a lot, actually. Um, she's a lovely, lovely lady. Cool. Um, so just for purposes sake, for time, right. um, we're going to create this. And um, so to isolate her now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer mask. Right. And I'm just going to give that a click. And there you have it. I'm done. Luckily, because it's a white background, yep. it's easy to isolate her. That's right. Um, from here, we actually want to create a new background. And so to do this, we're going to go up to the top and click File, New. And the settings I'm going to be using are width 1920, mm -hmm. height 1080, 1080 right. resolution 300, um, RGB color, color mode, and a white background. So a pretty standard scale there, yeah? Yeah, 1080. pretty right. standard. Um, and that's going to work well with our video file from right. Adobe Store. Yeah, of course, yeah, 1080. Right. So we're going to create that. Okay. We're then going to head back to our isolated image, and we're going to click the Move tool. And we're simply going to drag our subject off of here. 
onto our new background. All right. Now, as you can see, they're different sizes. So right. we're going to go and rect well, rectify that now. Scale it down a bit. Yeah. Right. So I'm just going to zoom out really quickly. Okay. And one way of doing this, you can go up to the top, and I believe you can go to Edit, and then click Transform. Yep. But if you want to use a quick shortcut, Control press T. Command T or Control T. T. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Um, and what we want to do for this image, we just want to really from the top of her head to the start of her shoulders. Um, so once you begin moving this, you can see it's not moving um, in the same... In this, well, it's out of proportion. Out of proportion, yeah, thank you, yes. Right. Um, so to move it within proportion, you want to click the shift key and hold the shift key. Right. And then you can drive from the, the corner and you can see it will move in the and same proportion. And you can proportion. hold the alt key as well if you want to do it and centralize it. That's true. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just going to play around this. I think okay. something maybe like that works. All right, cool. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in quickly. Yep, that looks good to me. Cool. So I'm going to click Enter to select that. Um, last thing now we want to do before we start looking for our video file right. is we want to create a new background layer um, that's going to be of a solid color. Right. And so to do this, we're going to go to new layer, new adjustment layer. All right. Click that and go to solid color, which is at the top. Okay. So from here, oh, yep. So from here, you can choose any color you want. Right. Um, I kind of like the blue, as you saw in my final piece. Okay. So I'm not going to make it too, too vivid for now. Right. So maybe something like this will work. And I'm just going to drag this underneath okay. the file. So we have something like this. Right. Um, we can then go ahead and delete the background layer that we previously had. Okay. And now we're ready to look for our video, our stock image, Excellent. stock video. Okay. So to do this, I've gone onto Safari. Okay. And what I did was, a lot of people don't know, it's not just images on, on the stock library, the whole deep, well, whole heap of assets. So I've gone to videos. Right. And I simply typed in London. London. And I think within four or five, it, in fact three, I found one that I was very, very happy with. As you can see here, it's a nice time lapse of um, Tower Bridge. And I take it these are like 4K images, uh, 4K. videos? Yeah, I mean, there are, yeah, so there are two options actually. You can click the 4K video or right. you can have the HD. Right. Um, and then I think somebody asked in the questions earlier about using the preview file and then using it on, um, on your actual, well, t test them out before you want to license them. Right. Um, so what I did, I, I did do that, but, um, just to save time, I did in fact download it once I'd licensed it. Right. Um, so once we had this image, once we had this video, I then went back into Photoshop. And the good thing is, is here on the right-hand side, all your files that you've licensed automatically come up here. That's right. Um, I downloaded the the 4 4K file, so just to save time, I'm just going to import that now. Right. And simply, we're just going to drag the file and drop it over okay. our image so far. Cool. Right. So. Now what we want is we want the video file within the cutout of my model. Right. And so to do that, we're going to head to this layer here, and we're going to oh. click just the, um, uh, the mask layer mask, there. yes. Yep. Um, and we're going to copy that layer mask onto the video. All right. So to do that, we're going to hold Alt key yep. and simply drag and drag drop it. it. On. Yep. There well, you go. There you go. Now, I don't like the composition of the two images together. I would rather Tower Bridge was centered in her face. Okay. So to do that, on this top layer here, you see this little link? Yep. We're going to click the link so that we can actually move them separately without right. moving the entire thing. Sure. And so we've got the move tool selected. And as you can see, we can now just move it around. Um, so I think somewhere around here is good. Just you always want to make sure that your video file is covering up the entire space. So right. as you see, and I've moved it, it's not covered up the whole thing. OK. So I'm just going to move it to about here. Again, holding the shift key so I can just move it in proportion. OK. Something like this, maybe. I'm sure you've got some shots of Tower Bridge in your portfolio, haven't you? I do indeed, yeah. It's one of my favourites. Is that part of the fog collection that you've got? Yes. Yeah, I saw That's that. Lisa? Yeah, yeah, I saw Thank it, you. yeah. yeah. Real yeah. vintage London the effects you've got going on there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Very early mornings. Very, very early. OK. Um, so yeah, that looks good. I like the way um, Tower Bridge kind of leads from my mouth okay. into frame. Cool. So now what we're going to do, this is what I think is actually the trickiest part of this whole process. All right. Um, we want to actually duplicate this layer and apply it above the video file. So again, I'm holding Alt, but I'm moving the entire layer this time All right. above the video. All right. We're then going to change the blend mode to lighten. And so that way you can see we start to now, mm. we're, we're now able to start blending the images to how, right, right, how we right. want. Okay, so 
from here, I'm going to click on just the layer mask, right. and I'm going to want to paint away part of the model's face so right. that we can show more of the video in the okay. background. Okay. And so to do that, we want to make sure that black is selected here. Because right. black hides, right? Black hides. And white reveals. Yep. yep. So we're going to click the brush um, tool. Okay. Um, we're going to make the opacity around about 25%. We don't want to blend them too harshly. Right. And we're just going to start painting away. Okay. Just painting away. So this bit can take some time. Sure. But just remember the, the most important parts of the video that you want to show, paint over those. So for me, the bridge. Um, is the traffic going to be in there or is it? The traffic will be, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. what we want. So we're going to paint away this okay. section here. Right. Yep. Um, and this bit is completely up to taste. So you can, right. do, you sure. can keep in the elements that you want. Sure. Um, some people like to keep the ears in. I think for this particular video, it's a little bit distracting for me. Sure, yeah. So I'm actually going to get rid of it. Right, right, yeah. And as you can see, it's starting to take shape a little bit. You're a Wacom man or mouse man? Um, I'm actually a mouse man. Mouse man, well? enough, yeah. I mean, because I mainly use Lightroom, don't I? So, oh, of course, of course. Um, of course. Okay, it's so coming yeah, up nicely like there. That's okay, yep. Um, so, yeah, we can do something like this for now. Um, now what we want to do is, as you can see, we've lost a, a lot of the detail on the face and we oh. want to bring that back. Okay. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, but on the video file now. Right, so bring that above. Um, well, we're actually just going to click on the, on the layer mask. Oh, go on in. okay, cool. And then we're just going to paint again. Right, on the right, face. right, okay. Using exactly the same settings, the black brush tool, 25%. Right. And we're just going to paint in the face. Lovely. I'm learning something new. I've never watched a double exposure tutorial before, so. Well, this is, yeah, this is. This is new for me. This is pretty new for me as well. It's um, a new technique, actually, I found. Okay. Um, so something like that works. Okay. Um, for, for time's sake, we'll leave it like this. Okay. Okay, so now the background to me looks pretty boring. Right. Um, and so a way I found it to make it a little bit more interesting is to have the entirety of the video in the background, but um, a little bit softer. All right. So to do this, we're actually going to click on this video layer again. All right. Hold the Alt key, and we're going to copy it. But this time, instead of moving it above, we're going to move it below, so it okay. becomes the background, like this. All right. And our layer mask that we've created before of the model's cutout is still affecting this video file, okay. so we actually want to get rid of it. As you can see, now it's applying to the whole, the whole, um, the entire uh, canvas. Yep. And so. What we're going to go and do now is we're going to convert this file into a black and white. So go to Image, Adjustments, um, Black and White. All right. Click OK. Okay. And then we're going to apply a Gaussian blur, blur just to make the subject stand out a bit more. Yep. So Filter, we go down to Blur, and we're going to go to Gaussian Blur. Um, I found the best number here that works is anywhere between 7 and 10. Right. Um, for this one, I'm going to use 9. Okay. Um, and then we're going to change the blend mode to um, soft light. Uh -huh. right? So now we still get the blue that we had before, but this is a little bit more detail on the background. Mm. And we're going to move the opacity to around about 50, something like that. Um, you can use whatever, whatever figure you like um, for that part. Right. Um, and so that's the basis of our double exposure um, cinema graph. This is now the second section, I would say. Right. I'm going to try and run this through really, really quickly. Um, so what we want to do is we want to open the timeline, and this is how you actually edit video within Photoshop. Right. So if it's not already at the bottom, you want to go to the top and click Window, head down to Timeline, and right. give that a click. Okay. This brings up the timeline. Click Create Video Timeline, and as you'll see, all our layers that we had before are now here. Right. But one thing we're seeing is that they're all different lengths. Excellent. Um, and so we want to make sure that the length of video we're using um, is representative for the whole thing, basically. So to edit just the video, if you head over to Layer and you hover over the video file, double click it, and it's going to open, should open, yep, into a new, new file, so you can edit this. Now, the great thing is, everything you do in this window then affects the other one as well. Right. So you won't have to then move them around and change them that way. Um, can I just say, someone's asking on social media, yes. how would you define your signature style? Um, Dark, moody, but beautiful. London. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, OK. Um, cool. So looking at this video clip now, 
Um, I want to keep the start because I love how the light kind of comes through Tower Bridge, right. but I don't want to include the entirety of the night. Um, okay. I only want to come up to maybe around about, around about here. Right. If you want to be really specific with the amount of time you're using on a video, you can actually head to the bottom left okay. and you can see this, time, this timer here. If you double click it, you can actually then type in the exact amount of time you want the video to run for. Okay. So I'm going to say six, six seconds, 15 milliseconds. Cool. And where, what is that done? So now this marker that indicates exactly where that time is. Right. So I'm just going to shorten the video to that time. There we have it. Okay. Cool. Now this is, this, is all, this is great. We've got the length of time. However, we want it to be a continuous cycle. We want it to be smooth and just keep repeating itself. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually ungroup these layers so that we have one video file. See that? Right. Now we can affect the entire thing. We're going to duplicate this layer right. by clicking, holding, and dragging it over to new layer icon. Right. Yep. Yep. Now we have two files. From here, we're going to go halfway. It takes some time. You're going to have to definitely keep rewatching this video for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I will definitely. For um, sure. And we're going to use this scissors tool here to cut the clip in half. All right. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to reverse the clips around so that we get a continuous cycle. So we're just going to drag this over to the left and drag this over to the right. So rather than downloading Cinemagraph Pro, which I have tried, okay, yep. you can do it all within Photoshop. Yeah, you can indeed, yeah, because I've used that as well. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's good. Um, from here, we're then going to actually chop these in half again. Okay. But instead of cutting them, we're simply going to drag and shorten them to okay. so about half. All right. And again, the same for here. You can be very specific, but I think because of the time, we're just gonna, gonna do it pretty roughly. All right. Cool. Now what we want to do is add a fade to the end of this clip and the start of this clip, so it then is really, really smooth. So we're gonna hit this icon here, and we're gonna drag the fade um, effect onto the back half of here, All right. and drag the fade to the front half of here. And that's it. So now when you play it, it has to render and load, but um, you'll get the gist when, when we export the final file. All right. Um, now what you want to do is save this, so click Command Save or Control Save or Command S, sorry. Right. Now once we head back, it's already going to be adapted to our timeline, it's already, already sorted itself out. Right. And so the last thing to do now is just to drag our other files so that they are the same, same length of time as the video. Right. Um, okay. And that is it, that's it. So once you export it, um, you then have this again which is the final file. Voila. Phenomenal. <laughs> no, it's excellent. I've, I've learned something new today. I'll be trying that at home Definitely. myself. So uh, yeah, I love it. It's great to see how you've included the video because there's so much great quality footage on Adobe Stock. And I think we really saw how much easier it is when you can search for and license videos right from within Photoshop. So Ron, thanks again. Thank uh, you. You've created an incredible image and you've definitely given the people some ideas to take away with them. It's phenomenal. Thank you. So thank you again. Okay. So we've got time to answer um, some, of, some of your questions on social media. Uh, so we have a, a stock question, okay. Um, and they're asking, how can I use stock to come up with, a new, with new design concepts? Okay. And um, the shortish answer would be, uh, designers are obviously coming with new concepts all the time, which they uh, often have to pitch to clients. So using stock assets that you integrate with Creative Cloud, it allows you to quickly and easily mock up images to show clients. So, um, you know, I, I know people um, have used uh, stock images for things like storyboarding and, and brainstorming too. So, so that's, that's more or less how it works. Okay, guys. So remember, you can ask us anything on social media. Just put your question in the comments below or using the hashtag Adobe Stock Remix, okay? So for anyone who's just joined us, I'm just gonna tell you about the contest we're doing for this event, and I wouldn't want you to miss out. So you just have to tell us in the comments what creativity means to you, and you could be the one who wins a uh, free one-year membership to Creative Cloud and Adobe Stock. If you'd like to try your hand at creating something like this, don't forget, you can get a free month's trial of Adobe Stock. Just follow the link in the comments. And if you've already got Creative Cloud, it's really easy. You just bundle it together with your membership so there's no extra admin or hassle for you.